I might have to wear Dama Bianca for my wedding ceremony, but then for like the after party, I'm probably gonna wear Draco because this is like my personality personified. Then later that night, well. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for today's video. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing my top 10 fragrances in my entire collection. And let me tell you, this video was so hard preparing for because to my surprise, to my chagrin, I have over 100 fragrances now. And I don't know how I feel about that. So getting down to a 10th of that was very, very hard but I think I've compiled my top 10 fragrances. I believe I've done this video before, so my updated top 10, and I'm nervous, and I might have a few extra, but today I wanna share those fragrances with you guys, so if you would like to see my top scents in my entire collection, then please keep watching. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I love creating fragrance content for you guys and I'm realizing that you guys like it as well. So don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you like my content and also let me know your scent of the day down below. I'm not wearing one right now, but I'll tell you which one I wore to bed last night when we get to it. I'm gonna start in no particular order. Y'all, this was so hard. And I know this is not my top 10 for life, and I think that's how I was thinking about it, but these are definitely the top 10 in my collection, and I don't think you guys are gonna be surprised. Now, it is two fragrances. Now, calm down before you try to crucify me, but I'm linking them together because the bottle is the same. <laughs> it's my creative licensing. So my first two fragrances, <laughs> <laughs> Parfum to Marley, Delina, and Delina Exclusive. <sighs> Y'all know how I feel about these fragrances, and it's so interesting because I purchased Delina first. I think this was my first Parfum de Marley fragrance, and I just recently got Delina. And I love them both for different reasons. Let's talk about the Delina Exclusive first. This is like your sexy, powdery, rose, She's mature, okay? Brings all the men to the yard. We'll just say that. This fragrance gets so much attention when I wear it, so be careful. It's definitely an elevated, more mature scent profile. It has some oud in it, I believe. Not for the faint of heart. The Delina line overall, I think, is very polarizing. You either love it or you hate it, and I tend to love all three. I have the entire trifecta, but exclusive will always be my favorite. But the original Delina, there's just something about her. She's fresh, she's tart, she's stunning, she's intense, she's a pretty girl. This is what I wear when I want to smell super, super feminine and fashionable and very on. Stunning, stunning, rose, lychee, rhubarb, bergamot, very like tart, fresh, rosy notes. Beautiful, but it's very tart, so it's not gonna be for the faint of heart. I tend to love this one. I also love mixing it with other fragrances. I think it's just so beautiful. And like I said, because the bottle is the same, it's the same, and it's my first fragrance, okay? <laughs> my second fragrance is another feminine one. I would have to say, as much as I, well, obviously, I have on a corset, like, I love to dress very feminine. But when I dress feminine, which is usually how I dress, I like to juxtapose it with something very heavy and masculine, but those aren't my top scents. So I'm shocked, cause I love a heavy masculine scent. But my second favorite is one of my absolute favorites overall, Al Hedamain Junoon Noir, and this is a dupe of Dama Bianca by Zerjoff. <sighs> I'm wearing this today. This smells like berries and fruit and plum and powder and vanilla. It's a very angelic, just romantic feminine scent. Pretty girl. A pretty girl fragrance is something you put on and it makes you just go like, mm -hmm, like to primp yourself. Super feminine. This is also juicy. I wanna say it has a note of kumquat. Like who puts kumquat in a fragrance? I don't know, but this smells so juicy and delicate and beautiful. It is just super, super feminine. Now I did like the original Zerge 
y'all Donna Bianca, but the longevity was like an hour. And y'all know that fragrance is way too expensive, so I found this dupe and it's perfect. The bottle is pretty ugly, but I love the scent and this is just so captivating and so comforting. I love this so much. Well, let's stay in the same brand somewhat. My next top fragrance is actually a surprise. I have two proper Zerja fragrances in my collection and I really, really love Overture, but I didn't pick Overture. Acento Overdose. Oh my goodness. This is an aldehydic, fresh, fruity, juicy, floral. It smells like laundry detergent, Mike and Ike's, and white florals. But very, very well done. Very masterfully blended. This is a very interesting scent. It is so feminine. This is like a scent that if I worked in a traditional office setting, I would wear to work, but spray sparingly because it's very, very powerful. But it is just so classic. This is like you go out to lunch at your country club after playing tennis and you bring a decant so you can freshen up. Or this is like what you wear when you're a boss babe in an office but you spray sparingly. This is what you wear to church. I mean, it's what I would wear to church. I love this so much. Very, very feminine, very striking, very classic, but very interesting because it's a fresh, fruity floral without smelling juvenile. It just smells very classic and elegant. And this smells like generational wealth. I don't know how else to describe it, but she is like, wow. So, so beautiful. I'm super shocked that my top 10 scents are all so feminine because I have a very masculine scent profile, but maybe not. <laughs> okay, my next fragrance is probably the most famous scent in my entire collection that every time I bring this out, you all know why. And this is Bond Number no. 9, Aster Place. This was the first Bond Number no. 9 fragrance that I ever acquired. I remember the first day I came across it, I went to Saks here in Atlanta. I had just moved back from New York like an idiot. I never went to the Bond store. And I tried this on a sample paper and my face lit up. This is such an exuberant, sparkling violet. Does it have patchouli? It's like a violet burst of energy. It just smells so regal. This smells so powerful. This is opulence. This smells like royalty. I love wearing this every year on my birthday because that's how I want to feel. So every birthday when I go out to dinner, this is the scent that I choose and it just makes me so happy. Um, this smells a lot like Dior's J'adore, but I just get a strong, violet note it probably has some patchouli as well it is an intense floral but like more ambery it's not too too feminine i haven't smelled this on a man but i would love to smell it on a man Ooh. It is unisex leaning a little feminine because it is a little sweet, but I could see like if you're confident, you can pull off a fragrance no matter if it's marketed towards a man or a woman to be feminine or masculine. Like I'll wear men's fragrances and people love the way they smell on me and I don't feel weird for doing it. It's all about your confidence and I think a man would smell amazing in Aster Place. Okay, my next fragrance, let's just go for the gusto. <laughs> Of course, we had to include sexy band-aids. So this is Maison Francis Cook Jean Baccarat Rouge 540. And you know, this is one of those fragrances where people tend to say everybody smells like this. Now I live in Atlanta, which Baccarat is very popular now. And even still, unless I'm in Lenox Mall or Phipps and there are young people wearing this, most people still don't know about this fragrance. Most people still don't wear it. So it's popular in the YouTube space because we all talk about fragrance, but in my everyday life, I rarely ever smell it. Oh, this will always be in my top 10. I don't care how popular it gets. I don't care how basic some people may think it is. It just smells so amazing. This is perfectly unisex androgynous. It smells like saffron and ambergris, sweet notes. It smells like sexy band-aids. It's medicinal, 
You know how old school band-aids smelled like the dark ones? They smelled kind of like medicinal. It's that elevated in a fragrance, masterfully blended. Just strikingly bold. It's sweet. It almost smells like spun sugar, caramelized sugar. It's intense. It's a little spicy. Oh. This is just class and elegance. And I know now when you think about Baccarat, specifically if you might live in Atlanta, you don't think about class and elegance. Well, I'm not concerned with what the rest of the world is doing, but when I wear this, I feel class and elegance surround me. And this will always be a fragrance that I wear when I wanna just feel very special. So I love Baccarat Rouge 540. If I love it, I love it, and I'm not worried about the rest of the world. He is a stunner. Okay, my next fragrance is one of my newest babies, and this is Navitas Parfums and AI the Great Ambrosia Imperial. When I tell y'all, this scent makes me so happy. And yes, I do have my bottle signed. Um, I had a meetup, a brunch with AI earlier in the summer and I brought my bottle so she could sign it because like, I was just so proud of her to know an African-American woman who I know through YouTube, who has her own fragrance. I was just so incredibly proud of her. And so I wanted to have a signed bottle because this is like an accomplishment for us all. Like, so I'm so, so proud of her. I know you're watching, girl. And every time I wear this fragrance, I just, I light up because you are just like, you're amazing. This fragrance is amazing. And I'm so, so proud of you. Whew. But this is a banana. And let me tell you, I don't like bananas. I actually hate bananas. But I didn't realize that I liked the scent of banana. I don't wanna eat it, okay? Now I will eat banana bread, but that's about it. But this fragrance is supposed to be reminiscent of Bananas Fosters, which I have had one time, my friend Dominique, the guy, he made it for me. And this is banana to me. I get banana, whipped cream, and rum. It starts off very light and fluffy. It starts off with whipped cream and banana, but then the dry down goes to like a banana rum. And at first I was like, man, I wish it had more banana, but I'm glad that for me, the banana doesn't last the length of the fragrance because it might be too sweet. It dries down to be so rum forward and masculine and just intoxicating. Ah. <sighs> This is a stunner. I mean, I think I have two fragrances in my collection that contain a note of banana, but this is banana done well. It's a whipped sugary banana with a depthy back end, and I am obsessed. I always tell AI I will support every fragrance release she has just because I'm that supportive person, but I love this so, so much. A top 10 for sure. Okay, my next fragrance, I was not gonna include it originally, but then as I was looking through my shelf, I said, oh no, you're amazing. I forgot about you. Armani Privé Rouge Malachite. And shout out to my friend Blend It Like Beckham over on Instagram, actually. He sent me this fragrance probably a year ago. This is the prettiest, most unique tuberose in my entire collection. And it's partly very nostalgic and very special. One, because Beth gifted it to me and this is like a very special fragrance, very pricey, so that was so, so kind. And so every time I reach for it, I think of Beck. But it's also nostalgic because my grandmother is a white diamonds girl, okay? My grandmother is in her upper 80s and every year for her birthday, we send her white diamonds because she loves white diamonds. Creamy, dreamy tuberose done so right. Not everyone will love tuberose. I love a classic white floral, but this is like, Classic white floral, but not sharp. A lot of times tuberose can be very sharp as it is in white diamonds, but this is just so creamy and dreamy. It's sophisticated, it's soft. I mean, it has good projection and longevity, but it's a smooth, soft, creamy tuberose. It probably has some vanilla in it, but I mostly get creamy tuberose and I love my white florals. Once again, she's a feminine scent. Love, love, love for sure. Can y'all believe I've had so many feminine scents? I don't know who I am anymore. 
actually. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, my eighth fragrance is the one that I have been obsessed. Obsessed. You gotta say it like that, obsessed. This is what I wore to bed last night. The Shawnee's. Oh goodness, what's it called? Nefs. I had a brain fart. This is Nishane's Nefs. And this, this little bottle, you see this bottle? This little bottle retails for like $700 or $650. Now I did purchase it for sale on Joma Shop, so I will link it down below. But this is worth every penny. And when I first received a sample from Jessica here on YouTube, I'll link her channel down below. I loved it, but I couldn't put my finger on why. To me, this smells like, and it's gonna sound weird, but just go with me. We're creating a picture, okay? It smells like minty fresh gum with creamy notes, creamy woodsy notes, with a masculine rose and oud. It's a very fresh, almost leaning herbaceous, but not too tart. A very fresh, minty to me, herbal rose that is very understated. And it's weird. I say it's understated because this has the best performance, longevity, but it's not bold and in your face how the Zerzhoff is. So this speaks for itself. This has nice sillage, but it sits closer to your body. It creates a nice scent bubble whereas this radiates so far out but I like that because you need to be careful where you wear this good lord when it is time for you to send my husband I already know I'm gonna be wearing this because it's that amazing <sighs> you, you want to talk about intoxicating when I woke up this morning I just stiffed my arm and I just smiled I almost did like a praise dance in the bed because it just smelled so amazing it smells like a masculine rose, not super, super sweet. The notes in here are all blended so well that they just roll into one another. It smells like a masculine rose and oud, but a soft oud and a fresh minty gum scent. And I don't know if that makes sense to you, but that's what I smell. And this is, this is like, it might be my favorite scent in my entire collection. And I want to overspray it, but even on sale, it was close to $300, so I won't. Whew, baby, intoxicating. Very, very sexy. Okay, my next fragrance is Moogler's Angel Nova, and this is my Summer Stunner. Now, so many people say that this smells like Delina. I don't see the resemblance. I mean, it's a rose, but I feel like people think that every tart rose smells like Delina, and to me, that's not the case. This is a rose and raspberry tart scent. It is fresh, it's juicy, it's tart. I wear this when it's really, really hot outside. I wear this to my pool because it just makes me feel so happy and exuberant. This does not smell like it costs around $100. It smells very, very well blended, but Moogler's scents are crafted masterfully. I love this scent so much. Very, very beautiful, a summer stunner for me and definitely a top 10 in my my book, my collection. Okay, the last fragrance, <laughs> Tiziana Terenzi Draco. She make it clap, clap, clap. She make it clap, clap, clap. I love Draco so, so much. I also purchased this this past summer and this is a peach sexy sensation. It's like sweet syrupy peach with white florals possibly. It is so beautiful and deep and unique and like androgynous and dripping peach. Oh, it's so beautiful. I have quite a few Tiziana Terenzi scents. Well, like three or four. And I think this is my favorite for sure because it's just so interesting. It's a very interesting masculine edge and take on peach. So I love this so, so much. The bottle is super heavy. It can definitely be used as a weapon, but the scent inside, amazing. That's Tiziana Terenzi's Draco. Okay, and I have three honorable mentions because I just could not contain myself to only talk about 10 fragrances. So we're gonna breeze through my honorable mentions. The first, is Simone Andrioli Leisure in Paradise. And this is one of my top fragrances because it's so unique. To me, this is just coconut and pineapple. Now in the burst 
opening, I get pineapple. That fades within like five minutes and I just get creamy, dreamy coconut, coconut milk. <sighs> it's so lactonic and I am really obsessed over a lactonic note because it's so comforting. I love wearing this to bed or in the summertime, I love wearing it like when I'm gonna be outside. This is a vacation scent. It's a comforting scent. If you ever have a stomach ache, <laughs> I wear this when I have a stomach ache going to bed. I love this scent so, so much. Very unique. If you don't like a lactonic scent, like if you don't like that scent thou shall not be named, don't try this. It's very milky, but I love it. It just works so well. It's so interesting for my collection. Once again, this is Leisure in Paradise from Simone Andrioli. My next baby, Louis Vuitton's Le Jour Celeve. And I'm so shocked because out of all the Louis Vuitton scents I own, this is the most simplistic. This is just citrus on citrus on citrus. I get mandarin orange and bergamot and a whole bunch of citruses. But it's beautiful, it's light, it's fresh, it's wear everywhere, wear every day. It's the morning of my honeymoon, like, I can't wait to be married one day. When I get married, I'm gonna do a whole video of my wedding weekend scents because I might have to wear Dama Bianca for my wedding ceremony, but then for like the after party, I'm probably gonna wear Draco because this is like my personality personified. But then later that night, well, <laughs> later that night, I might have to wear like Neffs because that's like, this just makes me feel like I'm on, you know, without to get too graphic. I mean, it will be my wedding night, hello. But then the morning after, this is what I wanna smell like. Clean, crisp, happy, joyful waking up in your husband's tuxedo shirt. Like this is what I want to smell like. So I love this scent so much. It's not very unique, but it's so gorgeous. And I don't have a lot of citrus fragrances. So this one is special. And my last fragrance is Lancome's Tresor La Nuit. This is strawberry, apple, rose, patchouli. It is sweet, syrupy, deep, oody. Oh my goodness. It's just a fruit bomb with caramel and it's just like dripping fruit. I love this. It's such a sexy scent. I definitely need to wear it more this fall. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. It's the perfect date night. Just wear out, want to be sexy and feel sexy. Lancome Tresor La Nuit. So guys, those are my top 10 or 13 fragrances in my collection. I hope you guys enjoyed this fun video. Let me know if you love some of these. Were you guys surprised by some of my picks? I am so surprised that all these scents were overwhelmingly so feminine because y'all know, like I love masculine scents, but these were definitely beautiful scents and scents that are at the top of my list for sure. I love you guys so much for watching. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.